Hello folks, welcome to lesson number two in the Beginner Blacksmith series. Today we'll be working on forging half inch round into three eighths square. I've already done a little bit on this side and I was filming it and the film didn't turn out so I, I switched uh, cameras. What you'll need for this project is a three eighths wrench to use as a gauge so that when you hammer down your stock, you can gauge where you're at when you get to three eighths. Um, I'll start on this side when we actually start uh, forging here. It's kind of cold out here today. We had snow earlier this morning, but with the uh, gas forge going, it'll warm up in here pretty quick. Um, so the whole uh, idea of this project is hammer control. So, the idea is that by uh, by the way you'll need three three foot sections of half inch round stock. So just take a, a long bar of half inch round stock, cut it off into three foot sections, and then hammer each section into three eight squared. By the time you get to your third section, uh, you should be pretty good at hammer control and learning how to visualize when you get to that three eight square. Uh, you should practice on taking out your hammer marks making nice square corners. Um, and what you'll find out is when you're hammering your half inch stock is that it'll probably start to twist on you. So you'll need to make corrections as you go along and get that all straightened out. Save your stock because uh, that 3 eight, uh, 3 eight square is what we'll use on lesson number three when we make uh, 18th century style hooks. And that's, uh, that's a really good project to learn a lot of different things, which I'll be uh, filming next week. So anyway, I'll uh, go ahead and fire up the gas forge here, and let's get started. So before we work on today's lesson, I want to talk a little bit about um, hammers, and particularly the head of your hammer here on the striking face. Um, usually... These days when you buy a new hammer, it's going to have a crown on there. This one and this one is not crowned. But this one, because I took the crowns off, but this one is crowned. You can see that crown on there. That needs to be taken off because uh, that will destroy your work. It'll leave all kinds of hammer marks. And uh, they're really hard to get out uh, if, you, if you beat your uh, material up too bad. So... That needs to be taken off, and the way to do that is on a belt sander. That's the best way, anyway, uh, the way I do it. Make sure you have a bucket of water with you, and so that each pass that you take, you dip it into water, and so that you don't ruin the hardness of the temper of your, of your striking face here. So just uh, slowly work that off, and the ideal is to make your striking face here oval, slightly oval in both directions and take that crown off. And the peen of your hammer should be the same way, slightly oval in two different directions where the ends are slightly lower than the top. We're having a hail storm come through so you're probably hearing it hitting the top of the roof here been going on for about 10 minutes now, it doesn't seem to want to quit, so excuse any noise. But anyway, I just wanted to talk about that. Um, you know, I don't know why, but a lot of these new hammers uh, seem to have a pronounced crown on the top, and you got to work them down. This is a hammer I bought recently that I'm working on, not only the handle, but the striking face. So I'm not quite there yet, I'm still working on it. But this had a very pronounced uh, crown on it. This is a Petting Haas 1000 gram uh, hammer. I shortened the handle down, oh, probably about an inch and a half, two inches. And uh, I like my handles a certain way, so I work them down. But now I'm working on the, uh, the striking face, and then I'll go and work on the peen after that next. And it's getting there. It's slowly starting to become oval on the top. I take my time, make sure I don't ruin the hardness of it, and constantly, you know, dip it in water to keep it cool as I'm working it on a belt sander. 
So this this hammer is is almost there. I've actually used it, and it, it's it's working okay. It needs a little bit more refinement. So I think you get the idea here. I'm slowly just working it back, turning round into square, half inch round into three eighths square. I'm taking my three eighths wrench and I'm just checking it every so often to make sure that side just a little bit too big. It's getting there, that side fits. So I need to hit here a little bit to uh, thin that out in this direction. And I'm just working my way back. The light taps that you see it's just me taking out my hammer marks, straightening the bar up, and making it look nice. So that's something that you need to practice. Just taking light taps. You know. Of course, when the bar is, you know, warm, hot. Uh, and practice taking out your hammer marks, straightening it up. And 
setting your sharp corners to make it look like it was machine rolled into a square bar. That's the idea here is to learn your hammer control so that you can make things nice and smooth and make them the way you want them and also to control your size. So just continue working the bar back and then uh, once you get close to the halfway mark just cool it off, turn it around, start on the other side and work your back your way back to the center again in the other direction and then before you know it you'll have a square 3 8 bar. Thanks a lot. See you next week.